Hi, folks. Welcome back to 8.5, Polar Form of Complex Numbers. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at specifically what do we mean by polar form of complex numbers now that we know what a complex number is and convert between the polar form of a complex number and the rectangular form of a complex number. We want to make sure that we know how to go in both directions. OK, so here we go. The polar form of complex numbers is this. All right, z equals r cosine theta plus i sine theta. And I think it's important, especially um, at this level, to really think about like, where does this come from, okay? And so one of the things I wanna do is kind of work our way backwards because in the previous video, I told you that z is really equal to a plus bi. So where does this cosine and sine come from, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to go ahead and distribute that R. Okay, so we're going to work our way backwards. We're going to distribute that R. And that would give us Z equals R cosine theta plus um, <clears throat> I R sine theta. All right, and we'll annotate here to make ourselves a note that we distribute it. So we know where that came from. All right. So now that we've distributed, I want us to think back to when we learned about polar coordinates. OK. And so one of the things we learned is that this, r cosine theta, is really another way of saying the x coordinate in rectangular. OK. So let's do a little color coding here. All right, this r cosine theta is really the same thing as x. And we know that, again, from our polar coordinates, OK? So let me just write that here, polar coordinates. All right. Now, we might also remember at the same time while we were talking about x is r cosine theta that we said y is actually r sine theta. So we can actually replace the green part with y, all right? So instead of saying i r sine theta, we can say i y. All right, now, if we think about our A plus BI, A was the horizontal movement on the, on the real axis, but X is also the horizontal movement around that, okay? So we can actually say Z equals A plus, all right? So this A is like our X. And instead of I, Y, we're thinking Y is the vertical movement and so is B, right? B talked about that uh, movement along the imaginary axis. So that's where we get the BI from, okay? So instead of YI, we have BI and we can just say, um, replace X, and y with a and b. okay and so this my friends is where this r equal or z equals r cosine theta plus i sine theta where that comes from okay but i also do want to make sure that we point out something else really important okay is that as mathematicians, we don't really like to sit and write this all the time because it's just kind of long. And so sometimes you might see it like this, Z equals R cis theta, okay? Now this cis does not refer to cis and trans, okay? So sort of same or opposite, but rather the cis is an abbreviation for the following. Ready? Whoops. Cosine I sine. C I S, that gives us our abbreviation. Okay. So most of the time we will see 
polar form, or we'll see complex numbers in their rectangular form, that's down below, or we'll see it in the polar form, okay? So let's maybe annotate one last time here. Let's make a note for ourselves that this is our rectangular form. And above, both of these are considered the polar form. Okay. They, they say the same thing. One is just a little bit shorter than the other. All right. So that's what we have for a definition of polar form of complex numbers, but also where it comes from. And so now we're going to take a look at a few examples where we practice going from rectangular to polar and then also from polar back to rectangular. All right, so for example, five and six convert the complex number from rectangular form to polar form. All right, and so what that means is that we want to have our z equals r cis theta. That's the form that we want. And in particular, we want to find the r and we want to find the theta, okay? Now, um, let's go ahead and start by finding our r, okay? So find r. Now, when we're finding r, turns out that we're actually finding the modulus, all right? So this is very similar to our this, which means we take the square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? Um, we can also think about this as our x and our y, but when we go ahead and plug in our numbers and we're careful with our computations, we get this, and that gives us the square root of 32, okay? So we've got our r. Now, let's go ahead and find our theta, okay? Now, to find our theta, we're going to use some of the tricks that we learned from our polar coordinates, and we're going to say that theta equals the inverse tangent of a over b, okay? And so, ooh, not, sorry, not a over b, b over a, b over a. Okay, and so we're going to plug in our numbers that we have from there. So we get inverse tangent of 4 over negative 4. And we know that 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. Okay, now what this means is we're thinking about the angle where we have a y divided by x value of negative 1. And if we think about where that is, there are two places on the unit circle that do that, All right? The first place is three pi over four, and the second place is seven pi over four, okay? So how do we know which theta we put into our equation? Well, here's my suggestion. We go ahead and we draw a diagram. Okay, so what I mean by that is let's think about what the original point looks like in rectangular form. Negative four plus four i. Negative four plus four i means I go negative four to the left and then up four. So I end up with something here. Now, if I want to write the same coordinate, but in a different form, I have to make sure that my r and theta get me to that location. So is this point the same as three pi over four or seven pi over four? And I hope we know that it's not seven pi over four because that's in quadrant four, but it's three pi over four. So that's how we choose this one to be our theta, okay? Now, we have to finish by writing our equation. So we, that's the part that I think some of us forget. We actually have to write the equation in the form that we want, all right? And so the form that we want is z 
equals r, which is root 32, cis 3 pi over. Okay. So that's one example of how we can convert the complex number from polar from rectangular to polar form. All right, let's do one more example to make sure we really got it. All right, find r, all right? So we have our z here, z equals root three plus, I'm gonna put a secret one i there just so I remember what my b value is. I know that, oops, I know that r is the same as finding the modulus of z. And so I take the square root of root three squared plus one squared. Okay, and I know that it's hard to work with the square roots, but a square root squared really just gives us that number. So square root of three squared is three plus one squared is one. So really I get the square root of four or we know that to be two, okay? So we found our R, let's go ahead and find our theta, okay? So to find our theta, we take the inverse tangent of the B value, which is one, divided by the X value, which is root three or the A value, okay? Now this one I think is always tricky for us to remember, but I'm gonna unsimplify it a little bit. What if one was really one half? And what if root three was really root three over two? Now I know that this is the Y coordinate of my angle and this is the X coordinate of my angle. And so what that means for me is that my angle could either be at pi over six or, and this is weird, it could actually be at seven pi over six. So I think we probably understand why it could be pi over six, but the reason it can also be seven pi over six is because both coordinates are negative in this quadrant and negative divided by negative still gives us a positive, okay? So two options. How do we know which one to use? Let's sketch a quick picture and then we can use that location to write our equation. So I'm gonna copy this. We'll copy it down here. And this Z, all right? Z is going to be root three plus one. And so I know that's going to be somewhere over here. I know it's in quadrant one. And that means I better pick the angle that's in quadrant one. Okay. So last step here, we're going to go ahead and write the equation. And we're just going to put in different numbers here, but our R is two and our theta is pi over six, all right? So there you have two examples of how to calculate uh, from rectangular form to polar form. Now let's take a moment and go the other direction. We're gonna take two examples where we have the polar form and we have to go back to rectangular. And I will say that these are gonna be a little bit more straightforward, okay? so. All you really need to do to go in this direction is substitute in unit circle values. Okay, so if you know your unit circle values, you're just gonna substitute them in, simplify, and you're gonna get your answer, okay? So here's what I mean by that. I know, I'm going to keep this 12, but I know that cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, okay? I know I'm doing a lot of highlighting here. Hopefully that's not too overwhelming, but this cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Plus I, and instead of sine pi over 6, I'm going to go ahead and put 1 half because 1 half 
is the value of sine of pi over six. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to simplify. So I'm going to distribute. That's going to give me 12 root 3 over 2 plus i 12 over 2. Now, I definitely want to simplify this. I'm going to get 6 root 3 plus 6i. And here, I have my rectangular form. Okay? So not bad at all. Just got to substitute in your values and then simplify. All right. So let's see. We got to find a value of sine 11 pi over 6. We also need to find a value of cosine pi over 11 pi over 6 for the last example. All right. So we get 4 times, let's see, cosine of 11 pi over 6 is still root 3 over 2, plus I sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Okay, so here's my cosine, oops, and here is my sine. All right, now I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get 4 root 3 over 2 minus 4 over 2i. And then I'm going to simplify. 2 root 3 minus 2i. And now I have my rectangular form for both of them, okay? All right, so in the next video, we're going to take a look at products and quotients. So we're going to practice multiplying and dividing. So come on back here to watch that.